It's actually, this is, this is another taboo in my life actually, it's O'Brien with an E. You can call me anything you like really, for all I care, but it's the O'Brien with an E. So, be careful guys, because I don't want you to, don't need to get the wrong person, because that's just not nice. It's very nice to meet you all. Tonight, I want to take you on a bit of a magical mystery tour, and a bit of a murder mystery tour that goes all over the world. Let me tell you, I am. This man, let me introduce you to this man. The year is 1890. It's a mild September afternoon as this man, called Louis, takes lunch with his brother Albert in Dijon, France. He's just had his Dijon mustard and he's about to depart. An engineer, inventor and cinematographer, Louis lives and works in a promising town up in the north of England called Leeds. He's about to get on a train. Something like this, probably not quite like this, but they never had Instagram in those days, so I'm not quite sure what the train looked like. Louis says goodbye on this afternoon to his brother and when on board, immediately sets to work with his papers because he's got some very important business when he gets back to England. Before he crosses the channel, though, Louis must first take the train north to France. But, da-da-da, Louis never makes it. When the train arrives at the capital, Louis is not on board. There's no corpse, nor indeed any luggage found. Who knows exactly what's going on? All kinds of theories are put out there, but his wife and his son think Thomas Edison killed him. <laughs> Why on earth would they think that? Well, two years earlier, in October 1888, if this presses play in a second, if someone somewhere presses play, they will see something magical here. <laughs> I get a little bit extra time now just to talk to you for a sec. Oh, fuck. I mean, sorry, fuck. <laughs> Can we go back to another slide at all? Or is that not going to happen? Will, will this work if, if, if there's another button pressed? It won't, will it? All right, just imagine that that guy is like going like this, that woman is, is just walking around, and those two are walking around in circles. Imagine that, because you've got great imaginative faculties. Thanks to this guy, actually. This guy's given you a lot of imaginative faculties. But anyway, imagine that. This is happening in Leeds. This is happening in 1888, because Louis has made the first moving film at his in-law's house at Oakwood Grange in Roundy. 52 frames, only 2.11 seconds long, shot at 12 frames per second, using this nifty little device, which is, looks a bit like some kind of dodgy bedside cabinet, but is actually the first camera that he made to use it. Nobody had yet made anything like that, but how did he come to do this? His interest in this new technology went back to his youth. When this Metz local grew up, they called him Louis Le Prince, because I'm from Yorkshire, not a professional when I'm getting there slowly. I call him Louis Le Prince. He looked at that building that we were at just then, but because I talked a lot before, I've, I've lost it now, at Whitley Partners <laughs> in, uh, in Hunslet, I think. And that's where he, he developed what he was working on. Over time, he worked on this camera. It was a 16 lens camera where he would, he would look through the viewfinder at the top and take pictures using each of the 16 lenses, which would create a moving image. It works, trust me. I have no idea how, but I'm told that he, he managed to do it quite well. In 1888, though, after toiling in his workshop on Woodhouse Lane, he finally made his prototype. After that previous successful dry run in, in uh, Roundhill, which was more successful than our dry run with it here, uh, but you know, he was a cleverer man than I was, he, he set up in the second floor there. This is a really bad slide now, because this was going to come up with a great film that he took from there, but it's not going to come up with anything. So imagine 1888, imagine the traffic going down Leeds Bridge. That's what you'd see right there. And that was a pioneering film, trust me. <laughs> but uh, you go on YouTube it later, that it'll be on there, trust me. So that's what he did. Today, passers-by can stop and observe the blue plaque on the side of 19 Bridge End. It's now an estate agent's. I don't know if it's a good one, but you can go and try them out for yourselves. Commemorating Louis the Prince, or the Prince. At Old Broadcasting House, where the BBC used to set up shop, he had his workshop there. He also had his first exhibition there, the first public exhibition of a film was taken in here and was had in there. There's another blue pla plaque there to show you. But, back to the mystery. Louis de France, when he came back to England, he was about to go off to New York. Didn't quite look again in 1888 and 1890 like it did there, but that's where he was heading. He was heading to show off his work. Now, some have put his disappearance down to suicide. They say it's possibly got something to do with money. Maybe it was a dodgy better culture presentation that he really thought he should kill himself afterwards. <laughs> his brother was the last person to see him. Possibly his brother had something to do with it somehow. It's a mysterious family thing. All that we know, though, is that Louis Le Prince at this time was entering into a patent war with Thomas Edison over here again. On returning to the UK, Le Prince was preparing to patent his 1889 projector which he would have then taken to the state. 
Edison was some distance behind this. He was getting, getting up there, but obviously this man being in Leeds, he was a bit further ahead of the crowd, but just nobody really appreciated it. <laughs> Edison would nonetheless insist later that he had invented the camera, but when that previous company that you could see the name of just then, the American Mutual Scope Company, took Edison to court over this, his son Adolf testified and said that, that Louis himself had done it. Adolf and Lizzie pursued the case for a long time, but he never quite received the recognition that he probably deserved. So much more to it, but I'm going very slowly. Louis, these gentlemen, the Lumiere brothers, of course, you will recognise being the cultured people that you are. They have also taken some credit for the work. They, um, they did all sorts of other stuff as well. This is a long history, really. But anyway, back in Leeds, meanwhile, we won't necessarily know, we, we will never know the full truth. Tragically, to many who crossed the... I was going to say so much more about the Lumiere brothers, but now I'm going to go on to Leeds Bridge. Many who pass will not even know the full story. They won't even get much of the story from this very garbled version tonight, but there is so much more to it. Uh, to many who cross Leeds Bridge today, it will be forgotten even ahead of the 125th anniversary next year. I personally think we should have a party. We can have a big party to celebrate Louis the Prince. His disappearance is still a mystery. The body was never found. But uh, if, you think he, if you think Edison did it, then the evidence is kind of insubstantial, but nonetheless, you can uh, make up your own minds for all, for all, and then tweet afterwards if you think Edison did it. He probably did. <laughs>